Hey everybody, meet Johnny. Johnny has a problem activating his body cam. Yeah, shut up, Johnny. You can speak when being spoken to. Nice fuck over on Stephanie. A nice fuck over on Evans and Depew. No body cam, huh? Forgot to turn your body cam on when you took Shelly's camper, huh? And then you took her over to Aurora and dumped her to motel, huh? Yeah, everybody, this is Johnny. Johnny Avila. Johnny doesn't like to activate his body cam. Yeah, because you got fucked. You fucking liar. You fucking pig ass fucking liar. So this motherfucker showed up two weeks ago up at Evans and Depew with 62 year old Shelly in her camper and told her to get out. He was taking her camper because it was a public nuisance. He forgot to activate his body cam all day. Smile, Moon. You fucking pig ass lying piece of shit. You dropped Shelly off in Aurora? What were you gonna do? Huh? Leave her there to die? Yeah, he forgot to activate his body cam for the whole event. And then put her in his car and dropped her off in Aurora so she could become homeless in Aurora. What's that? Give my facts? Give me my facts, motherfucker. Give me the facts, you fat motherfucker. Give me the fucking facts. Give me the facts, you fucking piece of shit. We don't appreciate you. You're a fucking lying, thieving, fucking tyrant. Go home, Johnny boy. Nobody fucking needs you out here. Get the fuck out of here. Get out. You fucking piece of shit. Fuck you. Fuck off, Johnny boy. Fuck you. Why, you gonna run me over? Yeah, you're just looking for a fucking reason. These are new. This is my first yeah, that's the new notice. That's my first one. That's your first one? Yeah. Oh, shut up. Shut up. So they're going to go up there and collaborate. Oh, yeah. I didn't even tell you how much fun I got to have with those set boys just last, last week. I'm streaming. Oh, man. It was pretty Did good. they offer you any services? Oh yeah, they asked for us connectable services. They said yeah, but Did no. they? So yeah, but not when you offer. Uh huh. Because well, he walked up and he said, "Hey, how long do you think it take you to get out of here?" I said, "I don't know, a couple hours probably." So he said. I answered his question. And why do you have to leave? Well, he didn't tell me to leave. Oh okay, good. He asked me how long it take me to leave. So he came good back for the you. Next day, he goes, well, "I thought we had an understanding." I said, "I speak English, so do you." Yeah, we got an understanding. Good for he you, goes, lady. I said you could leave. I said, "Oh no," you asked me how long it would take me to leave. I told you I gave you an answer. I love you. He goes, this, well, he goes, well, Blay is going to be through to, to write notices. I said, oh, cool. I haven't seen And that was the set team uh, telling said, yeah, you this? I haven't seen in a minute. I was going to get to see him again. They told us that Blay was on vacation. He was over at uh, King Supers at, like, Chestnut and somewhere down there, I think, in Glendale. Oh, yeah. Doing off-duty. Oh, shit. So, some, somebody watches the channel, found him at oh, that King funny. Supers. That's yeah. Funny. Yeah, doing yeah. off-duty. Yeah, so he was kind of, so the set team was kind of pissed off. They came back a couple days later, but they don't listen to well, you're legal. Well, yeah, I am. Everything's legal. It's played. I'm insured. I got everything. Every legal. single thing you own is legal. Yes. So that is harassment. How how does this notice apply to you? You're not an automobile junker. Right. You're fully legal and not licensed. Abandoned. Right. It's not abandoned. You came out and talked to him. Mm -hmm. I always do. And he, he's writing you an abandoned vehicle warning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she has 72 hours to move. And what is he calling you? Nothing. Nothing. 
Is oh, it? he's calling you a vehicle junker. But he oh. doesn't list uh, what the... Oh, check it. Add 48 hours of vehicle junkers. Yeah, 72 hours rally. total. So, but why why does he get to call you a junker? I don't know. Well, there's 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 municipal See, code that defines that. They have, they what they can get me for, the only thing they can get me for is the over the, the over limit of the Sure, life. okay, I get that. But, but this shit right here? Right. And this notice to begin with? No. Right. No. It should just be the warning for the over... 72 hour, or the 22 hour, the 23. On public property. Right. So oh, okay, there is that issue. Safety. All right, I'll well. Yeah, I'll let you know how this goes with these guys. Yeah, please do. Absolutely. Stay in touch. Good to see you. I'm going to run. Yeah, okay, good. Did you yeah. go back? Yeah, yeah, I did. I got my pillow. My pillow and I'm almost there. You're moving good. Good. Yeah, I feel better. No swelling? Yeah, no. Okay. Right on. So. I'm glad they Ubered you back, too. That was nice. I love Swedish. Bye, my friend. You, too. <laughs> uh, Johnny wants me to get my facts straight. Johnny wants me to get my facts straight. So the facts are... It's on video. They towed Shelly's camper. The facts are Shelly ended up in a motel in Aurora. Facts. The facts are I did a request for body cam footage for that entire day for his shift. No body cam footage. Get my facts straight. Mm hmm. You see what I'm talking about? I did a stream earlier. There's not that many people in here. Um, Johnston's administration is not serious about stopping this. It doesn't matter if it's just one or two or 10 people that are left standing on the street without a home, without any shelter, with all their personal belongings stolen, taken to the dump or impound. It doesn't matter if it's just a few because it's just me recording it. And it's just me. It's just little old me. You just keep throwing her ass in jail. Keep making shit up. It's just her. We don't really have to pay that close attention to that. We don't have any, we don't have any uh, leverage in making sure that these people's property is protected by case law, right? So fuck them. Just let them die. And uh, anybody that gets in our way, we're going to jail them. The ultimate goal really is to put all these people in jail as well. Um, it doesn't matter if they're legal, if, if they look homeless, if they're living any way that's not deemed suitable to government and those that support government confiscating people's property, then it's, it's not that big of a deal. So here we are. So I didn't get to read chat earlier. I'm going to just go through chat a little bit and see if anybody's... Johnny wants me to get my facts straight. Jay Avila. So when I did that last live stream, uh, Stephanie and I left. She's organizing another load. We get back to her RV. And all three of these are on her RV. One, two, three. This is a $350 ticket for uh, no license plate and large vehicle. Uh, it becomes a $700 fine after 8.30. Yep, that's this. the lieutenant of District 4 knows that uh, we're moving her into housing and not by anything that the city has helped do. Nothing. Not one thing. Okay? And then uh, another abandoned vehicle notice. Automobile junker this time. So... 
it's not going to stop. And uh, all I can do is expose it. Get your facts straight, Regan. Give me the facts, Johnny. Give me the facts. I, I'm ch I, I've been sending emails to everybody in the city that can give me the facts. Everybody's just dead silent. And my records request so far provide that the facts are he went and did what he did and didn't activate his body cam. So you tell me. You tell me. If you, you all, do you guys have the facts? Rain Nation, at her new place, can she safely keep her RV there? No, not likely. Um, Lois, the new mayor? So far, nothing. Um, I'm just not, I'm not impressed. He's got a hell of a PR campaign going on right now. Like I said earlier, he's going to start some trash service in a couple areas and the whole city's freaking the fuck out because how dare you provide sanitation, even though we've been bitching about sanitation, how dare you provide sanitation? So his whole team and staff are, you know, just softening the blow for all the NIMBYs, you know, that have a problem with sanitation. So that's, that's the big thing right now. And they started with just announcing that they're doing some trash service twice a week and wait till they announce that they're gonna put some toilets out there. It's, he, he's gonna have to have 15 staffers to respond to city council and the NIMBYs just to address putting, putting trash and toilets out there. Instead of just being like the, the last mayor, uh, why don't you just ignore that and move on to, to the things that you said you were going to do. You're going to house a thousand people before fall. It's August. Right now, right here, I got two people I could put in my car. I've got three women right now waiting for me to get back to them to tell them, get in the car. We got a place for you. Since you can't be here, government says you can be here, except government's not delivering. So he's going to house a thousand people before fall. But now that messaging is kind of changing. And now it's moving to a thousand people by the end of the year. Right. She needs the RV as backup in case new place doesn't work out or runs out of time. Yeah, she's in her new place uh, for a year. And then it'll be another process to start over. Sorry, got to hydrate. Get your facts straight, Regan. Give me the facts, Johnny. If a police officer doesn't have his cam activated, he should be considered a private citizen without legal authority, in your opinion. Um, he should immediately be fired. I'm sorry. There's a reason that the public expects these laws to be upheld. And as we know, governmental immunity, do whatever the hell we want with impunity. Yep, that's the point, impersonating a cop, theft, kidnapping, etc. But he's in uniform and he's got a gun. Yeah, a year. Guess what happens after a year? Nobody follows up on that, and then they're back out on the street. Just like what's going on with Jerry. For those of you that are following that story, Jerry, they stick him in rapid rehousing on a grant. It's good for a year. Nobody follows up. Now he's got nowhere to go. So we've been working on those applications, but he's going to be back out on the streets by the end of the month. So this isn't going to stop. This, this, this homelessness industrial complex for government is too important and too much of a moneymaker to actually solve. You saw me go up to District 4 the other day. Uh, another nonprofit gets to just randomly commandeer a bunch of open space on taxpayer-supported public property at District 4 that has probably more than an acre of land where they could immediately erect a safe outdoor space 
where it could be ran by the nonprofits that are already running those. But no, no, we're not going to do anything like that out here where all these people are right now, but we're telling them they can't be here. They can't exist. They can't survive. But we're going to let a nonprofit just walk into District 4 and ask, can I have that space? Oh, sure. Just as long as you're not putting homeless people on it. What are you doing with it? Oh, I want to build a garden. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. So I've done a records request for that. So far, no response. No response for any of those documents that certainly were in writing. I mean, right? I mean, what, do we just got a verbal agreement up there at District 4 that uh, a nonprofit can just take over the, the open space and then all the press picks this up and advertises that this great nonprofit who, by the way, needs your donations to continue to do their nonprofit work. Look, I don't have a problem with that nonprofit. However, they just got themselves free property and free advertising on the backs of taxpayers. So where was the process for all nonprofits to have the same opportunity? In Denver, you can't do things because of zoning. You need variances. You need land use approval. You need all this stuff. If you're going to be using public space in Denver, that's just public space. If you want to be a private business, the requirements are 50 times heavier. So, yeah. So, I mean, I know none of this, you know, makes sense to the NIMBYs. And they think that homeless people are just going to poof, disappear. And their goal, as well as the city's, is if we run them around enough and we take their stuff away, they're going to die. We're gonna have reasons to um, need to build more jails. We're gonna be able to have more discussions about how we can take all these people and get them out of sight. Meanwhile, over in the criminal justice system, you've got that whole jail loaded in Denver with mental health, with homeless. Nobody's paying attention to that. That's, there are 500 facets to what is going on with people with individuals who have done nothing to harm another person. This is, this is a communist faction sphere in a free country. And people are just like, until it comes to your front door, you're gonna let government do this and segregate society again based on economic inequality, uh, mental health issues, Lack of, lack of resources, lack of even really understanding what day it is for a lot of these folks that struggle every single day with just simple survival. Let's just let them die. I'll look the other way. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do my thing at the park, go play some golf and uh, you know, a bunch of overdoses. Yeah, the morgue's filling up. Yeah, oh well. Yeah, I don't know. So we call this a free country um, unless you're homeless. And that's the truth. If you're homeless in America, you are part of a communist regime response from government. It's the bottom line. It's just the bottom line. Snarky, I'm certain the nonprofit is somehow involved with the Denver cleanup people getting funding by burning people's lives at both ends. Well, no. This nonprofit donates food. They grow the food, right? That feels great. Look, I'm not trying to say that their work isn't valued or important. I, I, I've watched this particular nonprofit kind of grow, um, but it definitely isn't really focused on homeless folks, I'm just gonna say. So, and that's their prerogative. Uh, they say they give to food banks and whatnot. I'm going to trust they do. So I've never seen them out here like distributing anything to the homeless out here. And that's that's fine too. But just saying, those are my observations. I think that's great that you grow food for the community. Except you're getting special exceptions to grow food while others can't grow food. Eh, that's kind of weird. And government's granting you the position, the permission to do that. Eh, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Government picks winners and losers. Government decides who lives and dies. Bottom line. 
Yeah, thank you, swine. You cannot grow food outside in the winter. That's correct. Thank you for pointing that out because it's not a year-round opportunity. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. So uh, my day has gone from needing to do something to doing something totally and completely different. And um, so I'm gonna get off of here right now because I just felt that it was important to go live while Johnny um, was prepping to get out of his vehicle to uh, let everybody know that they don't have a right to uh, exist, be here, whatever it might be. Um, you can be legal. You can be totally legal, paying all your fees and your taxes and licking the boots, but you still can't be here because you look, you look like somebody I don't think I like looking at. So move along. Move along. You guys, thank you very much. I'll be uh, popping back in to uh, talk about Stephanie's wish list. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good rest of your day. It's hot. Drink lots of water. <laughs>